And yes, people will stare at you when you come to Korea. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Josie, your fave Swede in Korea. And in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the things I wish I knew before coming to Korea and what if I would have gone back in time would have changed before I visited Korea for the first time. So uh, yeah, let's just get started. So obviously now I live in Korea and I have been living here consistently for over three years very noisy oh yeah i've been living here since 2019 pretty much consistently but it wasn't until like 2021 that i really got to experience korea properly because i happen to be a huge introvert i'm a huge homebody i don't really go out much i have a hard time meeting new people and making friends i am very scared and yeah that made it very difficult for me. So some things I wish I would have done prior to coming here or known prior to coming here are the things I'm going to talk about today. So let's just get started. So the first thing I would have made sure of is I would have studied Korean way, way more before coming here. Because even though you can get by by only speaking English, you can definitely do everything. It's a whole world of difference if you can ask for help in Korean or order in Korean or anything it's like the first time I came here I thought I was great at Korean if I'm gonna be honest because I was like I've been listening to K-pop since 2011 it's been like five years I've seen all the variety shows I know my annyeonghaseyo's my kamsammida's I know everything but that wasn't the case no no like I remember I ordered at a cafe and I was like mm, yuja cha juseyo and I thought I was doing great but then I wasn't so tough anymore when she was like and I was like, huh? Because obviously since I ordered in Korean, they answered me in Korean, but I didn't have any idea what she said. But basically she just asked if I wanted the receipt, which, you know, I could have figured, but I had no idea. So I just stared at her very awkwardly. Yeah. And that's another thing, like when I started learning Korean a little bit after I started going to language school, I had a hard time with the phrase at cafes when they ask you if you want to eat in or do takeaway. And they would ask you, which in my mind, my brain, eat and ka, which means go eat and go. So in my mind, somehow I thought that was like, you're eating as you're going, which would mean take out. But as I came to realize that actually means, do you want to eat in the restaurant? If you want to do takeaway, it's pojang. But I didn't know that up until I started doing Korean classes in 2020. So it was a long time of me just thinking I knew so much more Korean than I actually did. So yeah, that was just something I really wish I would have studied more Korean. Because even if I knew the alphabet and I knew some words from variety shows and stuff, I had never studied in a book or anything. And I think it would have really helped knowing a little bit more at least so I could ask where's the bathroom and then the second thing I wish I would have known is in Korea the towels in the bathrooms are so small and I thought they were just for you know wiping your hands but no no those tiny little towels is you like wipe down and get dressed in the bathroom before you come out unless it's like an ensuite or if you have your own place, obviously. But I remember in the beginning, I wish I would have known so I would have brought my own big bath towel because as a girl with long hair, and especially my hair is so brittle that I can't blow dry it every day. It's gonna get really damaged. So I wish I would have had like, you know, a towel so I could make my... You know, I could wrap my head hair up in a towel or something, but no. I had no idea. And then the third thing is as an introvert, it's really, really difficult to make Korean friends. Now, if you're an extroverted person and you're very comfortable with making a fool out of yourself or even just talking to random strangers, you really enjoy it and you're really good at keeping in touch and everything, I'm sure you'll do great. You'll make lots of friends and be able to hang out with them. But for me, I've been living in Korea for three years. I've been in and out of the country since 2015. It's been a long time, but I don't have a single close female Korean friend. And Koreans are very like clicky. They stay with 
with the people they know that they met in university or at their job or at a hobby. It's very difficult to make like genuine connections. And also they kind of tend to treat you as a language exchange. So they just want to practice their English or yeah, it's very difficult to make like a close relationship with a Korean female. For males, obviously most of them would just try to date you. So that's, you know, how, how you will. Uh, but most of my closest friends in Korea have been other foreigners. But then that comes the issue of their visa is ending or they're done with Korea and they want to go back home. So then you have this friendship that you can't really keep up with anymore because, you know, they're in a different country. Of course, you can, you know, still stay in touch on social media and stuff like that. But it's not the same as being able to hang out frequently. So yeah, it's just been very difficult because I'm a very shy person. Oddly enough, like doing YouTube videos and speaking to a camera is more comfortable for me than speaking to people in real life. I get very anxious. I have some social anxiety and, you know, I fake it until I make it most of the time and I can have a good time in crowded settings. But most of the time I just end up wishing I was home. But it does get very lonely because I do not have a lot of friends in Korea. And that's something I'm working on but I just wish before I came here I would have known a little bit you know what it was like especially if you're an introvert as well uh, it might not be the easiest thing but I think it would be very beneficial for you to go to a language school because you will naturally meet other foreigners who are learning Korean there and you can practice your Korean so I made a lot of Japanese friends that way because the only way to communicate with them would be by speaking Korean and that improved my Korean and improved their Korean as well so it was just you know I came all the way to Korea and all I made was Japanese friends. I'm sure I will make some long-lasting Korean female friends in the future. It just hasn't happened for me yet. I haven't met someone that I click with super well yet. And also, I'm very bad at staying in touch with people via messages. I have this anxiety of like, you, you know, like just sending a message to someone. I'm like, they're gonna think like, what does she want? Why is she messaging me? They're gonna be very critical of why I'm even reaching out. So that has me like very hesitant to do that. And I know that they don't think that way, but it makes it hard for me to kind of build the friendships into something more long lasting than just, you know, following on Instagram or something. Because, you know, there's certain things that you can't really talk to boys about. You need those feminine vibes in your life as well. So next thing I wish I knew before coming to Korea. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think this video through that much. It was just a topic that I really wanted to talk about. But now that I'm here filming this video, I'm just like, damn, should have probably thought about it a little bit, tiny bit more. One thing I wish I would have known is how difficult it is for a foreigner to actually move and settle down in Korea. It takes a lot of research and you have to see all of your options. But getting a visa and being an English teacher was not an option because I'm not from an English speaking country. And then if you're here on a working holiday visa and you don't speak fluent Korean, it's very difficult. Like, how are you going to work at a cafe if you can't take orders or, you know, especially as an introverted person, it was very difficult for me to, you know, try to find somewhere where I could work. Because here's the thing. I have close friends and acquaintances that have had no issues finding part-time jobs in Korea. They've made so many Korean friends, they've integrated themselves so well in the society, but I just haven't been able to do that because of my personality. And if you're an introvert as well, you probably will struggle a little bit, but uh, just find the right type of people around you and don't be afraid to reach out to people and you will do well. Uh, it's just, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than if you were naturally a very outgoing type of person. I wish I was outgoing, but I'm not, but that's okay. Guys, we're, we're fine. And then I just want to say like, liking Korea and liking Korean stuff does not make you a Korea boo. Now, I could say that my early days of liking K-pop could have been seen as a Korea boo, but honestly speaking, most of the people that are judging people for liking K-pop are the ones that either been rejected by someone who likes K-pop or someone who just has way too much time on their hands because actual Koreans don't even know what a Korea boo is. So the only people who could judge you for how much 
much you like Korea would, you know, be Koreans. But they just find it flattering and interesting that you like their country so much. So uh, I just want to say, like, you, you enjoy the music you enjoy, you enjoy the culture, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if people want to call it Korea boo or Korea boo behavior or shame or throw shade, just get a life honestly there's no shame in liking another country's culture there's no shame in learning the language and there's no shame in being a fan of something and even though you might think that there's an age limit or it's cringy like i look back at my old stuff and i'm cringing so much because i was cringy but that also was a really important part of my life and i escaped a lot of bad mental things because i had something else to focus on so I just want to say, like, before you just go down and write something, oh, Korea boo, nobody cares. I'm living my best life, and I hope all of you guys are also living your best lives and just stay unbothered and don't give energy to people who are like that. Uh, but I just wanted to address it a little bit. It's okay to enjoy K-pop and Korea, and it's okay to learn the language and practice the language. Because if you're going to try to shame someone from trying to use the language, how will they ever learn? And that is the one thing that's going to help you the most in Korea. Just learn Korean. And yes, people will stare at you when you come to Korea. Have a goal with your trip here. Experience as much as you can. But just know that if you're an introvert, it might be a little bit difficult to make friends. And that's okay. Just take your time. I'm rooting for you and for myself. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. I will try to make a few more more planned out videos. Today was kind of spontaneous and it was just a topic that I had been having in my mind for a long time and I wanted to talk a little bit about it today. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and I will see you in the next video coming on Thursday. Stay hydrated and I love you all so much. Bye-bye. They can't see me like Houdini moved discreetly. I go poof. They can't see me like Houdini.